up on CTV News tonight. Quake victims' families denied funding for legal representation by the government. And Ballantyne's department store announces redundancies. Welcome to CTV News, I'm Emily Cooper. Quake victims' families have been denied government funding for legal representation at the inquest into why some buildings failed during the February earthquake. The families say they have questions that need to be answered. Around 53 families who lost loved ones in the Christchurch earthquake applied unsuccessfully to the government for legal aid to help them participate in the Royal Commission of Inquiry. The families currently have legal representation but want funding to pay for ongoing representation. Dr Maan al Kaisi's wife, Dr Maysoon Abbas, died in the collapse of the CTV building. He says the government told them they would get the answers they were looking for. Well, they said that the Royal Commission will ask the questions that the families probably would like to find answers to. However, he says they need legal representation, as there will be questions the inquest alone will not answer. He says he believes there are areas the Commission will not answer, such as liabilities and the search and rescue operation. There are areas where the Royal Commission will not investigate, like, for example, the inquest, which is the cause of death, like the liabilities, and like the rescue and search operation. All these really important for the future of Christchurch, because people would like to obviously be assured that something like this will not happen again. And I believe that uh, it's, it's important that we, we follow up on all these aspects. Dr Al Kaisi says the families will request legal aid from the government again as they need legal representation for the long process ahead. He says the families will be the only party in the inquest without legal representation. It's because this is a very long process. It involves many departments, agencies, building owners, engineers, city councils, and they're all going to be represented by lawyers, but the victims' families, and I feel that this is not right and probably not fair. He says there are many currently unanswered questions. First is why this building has collapsed, whether this could have been prevented by proper inspection, uh, how we prevent this from happening in the future, what steps are going to be taken really to ensure that this will not happen in the future. And I believe that this will take time and we need legal team to follow up all this process, to check all the documents, to inform us of all the process important documents that have been presented and to follow up this process to to ensure that something really at the end will will come come out of this dr al Kaisi says the government promised support john key promised us many times that he will do anything to assist the families and this is really the only or the first request from the families to the government. So we were expecting that it's going to be supported. And we, as a matter of fact, were disappointed that we didn't get the support that we actually deserve. Lawyer for the families, Grant Cameron from GCA Lawyers, agrees with this and is upset with the head of the Royal Commission, Justice Mark Cooper, agreeing with the government's decision, saying he should remain neutral. However, Justice Cooper says he wants to stay out of the debate. I think the emotion came through. Some of them seem to think that um, John Key promised at the Aurora Centre that he would uh, do anything reasonable that the families wanted. And of course this is the one thing that they have asked for and so they're somewhat, uh, there's some degree of consternation in having now been seemingly knocked back. Both Mr Cameron and Dr Al Kaisi agree this tragedy is no different to previous tragedies that had inquests, including the current Pike River inquest and the Cave Creek incident, 
where in both cases families had legal representation. I have no idea. Um, there is no difference. The tragedy is the tragedy and uh, in legal terms there's no question that these people are interested persons. They're entitled to be heard before the Commission of Inquiry. Uh, quite plainly on any sort of moral, from any sort of moral perspective, uh, they need to be there, they want to hear what's going on, they want to be part of the process, they want to be sure that the outcomes are positive and the best that we could obtain. So there is no difference. Dr Al Kaisi says they will continue to try and gain funding and they hope to get a positive response from the government in the next few weeks. The families who lost loved one already in a in huge pain and stress and just by having legal representation somebody will take at least some of the stress from the family, somebody will front up in front of the panel, in front of the investigation and talk on, on their behalf will help us really a lot and uh, this is the least that the government can do to at least release some of the pressure on us. The 53 families gathered at a meeting last night with the lawyers and Mr Cameron says if the government turns down the funding again he's uncertain how these family members will react. Well that remains to be seen. The government would then be placing the families in a very, very difficult situation. I think there's a high degree of emotion, there's a very high degree of feeling. What people will do in those circumstances I'm not going to predict. Um, we, in a sense, uh, but the lawyers and are consequently observers in this. It is for the families to drive this forward for themselves. Uh, I think they've got a lot of community support and I guess the government at the moment is simply monitoring what the real position down here might be. Submissions for the Royal Commission close on Friday and if you want to support the families or get more information, you can visit www.quakefamilies.co.nz. Ballantyne's department store has announced its restructuring. The iconic department store is reopening the centre of the city on the 29th of October and it's announced it's looking to realign its business and staff numbers to what will be a different trading environment for the company. Due to the reduction of retail space and the reduction in foot traffic in the CBD, Ballantyne's will be downsizing staff numbers. The store has lost space with the demolition of the Anderson Building and Stables, which was built in 1904, as well as New Zealand Gifts in the Guthrie Centre and Uncertainty over the Contemporary Lounge. Mary Devine, Managing Director of Ballantines, says while the company has continued to pay staff for the last five months, this is now unsustainable. Staff are now being consulted on the proposed restructure. Ballantines will still maintain staffing levels in the excess of 250 for the City Mall shop. Ideas such as job sharing has been brought up and Ballantines says as the CBD returns to normality and people begin to return to the city, they will look at rehiring. Coming up after the break, Littleton and Sydenham residents get a first look at plans to rebuild their damaged town centres. Welcome back. Littleton and Sydenham residents and business owners have had a look at the first draft of the Christchurch City Council's plans to rebuild the Quake damaged town centres. The final community feedback presentation is being held in Littleton on Thursday night. Samantha Early reports on their reaction. Littleton and Sydenham are the first two quake damaged town centres to begin the rebuild process. Workshops and focus group sessions were held with locals in May and June and this week the council's designers presented their initial ideas in a series of community feedback sessions. In Littleton the reaction was mainly positive. I thought it was very good, um, whether it comes to fruition or not is uh, another matter. I did notice that uh, a lot of it was sort of uh, 10 to 15, maybe 30 years before um, uh, these plans come into, 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 into place. I thought it was excellent. He'd put a lot of thought and energy and lots and lots of drawings. So it was just pretty amazing, really. Oh, and, you know, that helps us to feel nurtured here because somebody's caring about what they're planning and doing for the future for Littleton. I was impressed with how well thought out all the questions were. I thought they really took the time to look at detail. Um, 
I love the the way they look at the, the old waterways and um, just looking at new ways of seeing, getting a view from the ter roof terrace, just, yeah, making use of what we've got here locally. And the presentation was very good, there's no doubt about that, uh, except that the main elements of what is required in Littleton have been left out and those are access to the waterfront and the problem of the heavy trucks on Norwich Quay which is, will have to be resolved before um, the town can go forward. Norwich Quay is a big issue for residents and the local community board chair has misgivings about temporary improvements being considered. Often after disasters what is set up as temporary ends up being permanent and I, I mean the community is very strong on wanting to get that heavy port traffic off Norwich Quay um, as soon as, it's, as it possibly can be done to enable the town to go forward. She says changes to the district plan are needed to protect the town centre. At the moment Littleton's very vulnerable, um, there's, there's nothing to prevent uh, uh, one of the property owners in the town centre um, building a development that, uh, what I call the um, Beckenham, Beckenham model where there's a building with um, car parking in front of it. Do you know what I mean? Where the cars are between the road and the building and I think that would be a bad outcome for Littleton even if one site goes that way. We need um, rules that um, that will encourage people building anew to put the edge, you know, the, the building right up on the road boundary so that we end up with something that is very similar to what, what was there before and, you know, a good streetscape. In Sydenham, more than 200 people went to their community feedback session. One dairy owner was pleased with what the designers have come up with so far. They want to get residential back in the area so there's going to be people around all the time. So that, that's a good and you know, they just want to get more offices as well. So that's good. It's really good for you know, businesses really as well. The ideas and options for both town centres will be developed further over the coming months before the draft master plans are presented again to the public, then to the council. Action plans will be made and projects prioritised. They will still have to go through our long-term planning process to be funded and we're well aware of the different calls on funds at the moment. So. What we do need from the community is what are the priorities for them and what would be the, the best first steps to get um, things to change. What, what do they think are the most important things to happen? There's been changes to the structure of Christchurch City Libraries, with some out of action and some temporary libraries opening. With the Central City Library closed and many more damaged, the Christchurch City Council has opened many libraries. We've got lots of libraries open now. Um, most of our libraries certainly uh, throughout the city except for uh, the Central Library in, in the centre of town and uh, we've got three libraries closed in the western suburbs current just temporarily um, because council staff are needing to use them for essential services. So we're working, working to a timetable which I can't share with you just yet but we're working to, to um, reoccupy those libraries to get them reopened again uh, within the next few months so there's definitely a programme for that. There's a new Central South City Library, which is a refurbished store in South City Mall in Colombo Street and one in Linwood. Each mini library has around 7,000 items. We've had, a, we've had a preliminary report and it's looking reasonably okay. I think the building has performed really well, uh, which is great news for us. Um, but clearly it ha does have some um, considerable repair work to be done as well. Uh, and we don't know yet what that, what, how long that's going to take, what that might cost, you know, what the full extent of that is. But we know there is repair to be done. Uh, we can't get in there. We ha we've had very, very restricted access in there until we've known that the building is structurally um, okay, um, and also it's behind the cordon, and it's got um, it's in it's in the precinct where there are other buildings that may possibly have to be demolished. So there are a number of complicating issues with it, but we've had a good good first report to say that uh, it's it's held up pretty well. The city council is looking for another premise for a mini library, as it's uncertain when the central city library will reopen. City Libraries has also been looking for a suitable central city location for a new library because the central city library remains closed.
We're standing in one here at the moment, so we're in Linwood Mini, um, in the heart of Linwood in Smith Street, and uh, that's been open, um, can't quite tell, probably about three months now, um, uh, pr providing a great service um, to the local community. It's certainly much smaller than, than the normal Linwood Library, um, but it's, you know, we've got lots of books and, and magazines and DVDs and computers in here. Uh, people are using it and really enjoying it and obviously able to get stock out, so that's fantastic. Uh, Linwood Library, our, our main library in Linwood, uh, is being repaired and that's just starting now, I think it might have started last week, so we'll probably in a couple of months time I, I would expect we'll be opening, um, reopening Linwood again, but this is a really good um, I guess backstop, uh, something that we can actually offer in the meantime. The Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Authority has ordered the partial deconstruction and demolition of St Martin's Voluntary Library. The building was damaged in the September 4th earthquake and has been closed since then. It sustained further damage in the 22nd of February and June 13 quakes. Work began on the demolition this week. For more information about which libraries are open, visit www.christchurchcitylibraries.com. Shock announcement today, Kiwi golf caddy Steve Williams has been sacked by the former number one Tiger Woods. Pete Smith went to find out from Rustley Golf Pro Carl Booking what this impact will have. Well the lead story today that came through was New Zealander Steve Williams has been uh, dropped by uh, what was the world number one Tiger Woods. Is this just a further unravelling of the lifestyle of Tiger Woods? Who would really know? If you've been on the bag for 13 years, they were as thick as thieves we were led to believe. Quite a shock really, so we thought we'd come out to the golf course, which is Rustley, and we'd catch up firstly with the shop manager, Richie Bath. Richie, a bit of a shock, wasn't it? It just came out of the blue? Absolutely, yeah. No, I'd never expected it. Yeah. Um, it seemed to be a very, very close relationship that, uh, and very close friends as well off the bag, which, uh, not that I know personally, but what I assume. Yeah. So, yeah. From a professional's point of view, I've got Carl Brooking with me. You're the pro out here, the teaching pro, I think they call you at Rusty, don't they, mate? That's right, yep. yeah. Okay, let's just look at the relationship between a pro and a bag man. You know, normally you'd have to have some synergy, wouldn't you? Absolutely, I think uh, yeah, you definitely need to have uh, that friendship created and um, been able to get along with them. And, and the, I think the caddy, you know, really needs to know the player very well too, so they don't upset them too much. If you've had the opportunity to cut, to, to be the bag man for the world's number one mega star um, and, and quite a freak as a golfer, yeah. um, it must be difficult to keep that bond, is it? I would say it'd be pretty hard to keep up. I mean, I've never experienced it before, so <laughs> who knows? But um, yeah, in regards to Tiger and Steve, it's total shock to everyone, I think. And um, you know, I think Tiger's personality and just from his, you know, his history, you know, he can cut people off pretty, pretty quickly. So yeah, even his mate, you know, his best mate. So you know, it's it's hard to fathom sometimes. But I haven't seen the uh, the interview of Steve and um, or heard him on the radio or anything. So. But yeah. you, you've met Steve, you know, you couldn't get a more basic, he's a New Zealand guy, I'd say he'd be totally loyal, wouldn't he? Yeah, he is, he yeah. is. I met him at, uh, when he came here to Rusty for a function, mm -hmm. um, and we met him there, and he spoke really, really well, and really good, genuine Kiwi guy. Yeah, the world is pretty shocked. Um, is this the unravelling of the great man? Who would know? I think he's a bit of a tortured genius just at the moment. Coming up after the break, your local weather. Welcome back. Shipping containers have been put to all sorts of uses around Christchurch after the earthquakes. In Sydenham, where many buildings have been demolished, a dairy owner is using one for his temporary shop. It may be smaller than they're used to, and when it's busy it can get a little cramped. But for these dairy owners on Colombo Street, a 12 metre long shipping container has proved a lifeline for their business. In the earthquake, the veranda fell off the front of their old building and bricks came off at the back. The whole block was demolished about a month later, but two weeks after that, they got a container and set up shop. Yeah, it's smaller, a lot smaller, but it's okay, it keeps us going for now, you know, it keeps the loyal customers coming back. No, it's been good, yeah. Hopefully we can get another premises around the area soon, so we can move into there for a couple of years or so, yeah, until we rebuild. Did you have to rebuild the dairy back on the side? Yeah, or? yeah, definitely. Yeah. What's it like? Does it get pretty cold in here? Oh, in the it, winter? it does. It does get cold when we yeah. open it up in the morning. But there's heat pumps in here. But, you know, it is cold. Yeah, you've got a wee bit more clothing. 
and Hitesh says they've had a lot of good feedback from the public. Mark Thomas from the New Zealand Fire Service is commending the efforts of the volunteer fire brigades around Canterbury. Now let's look at the meeting that was held on Monday night. Tell me about that. I went to a meeting on Monday night of the chiefs and deputies of the uh, volunteer fire brigades that are associated with Christchurch City. Uh, that's Diamond Harbour, Harbour, Governors Bay, Littleton, uh, Sumner, New Brighton and Brooklands. And uh, the, the chiefs there were each explained what had been happening and, and I was just struck by the fact that uh, one of them at one stage uh, mentioned, uh, look this is my hobby and he was talking in relationship to the fact that um, the, the staff in those brigades do need some social activity um, to keep them interested and so on. And I thought some hobby, these guys have given nine months of their lives basically to their communities. Mm. They have uh, gone so far beyond the call of, uh, of duty, it's, it's amazing. Some of them are now in situations with their brigades where they, uh, in, in the words of our Mayor, the, the station is munted. Mm. Uh, Littleton's a good example. They're working out of containers with their trucks uh, parked outside. Uh, Brooklands, uh, most of the staff at Brooklands are living in houses that are either um, red stickered or uh, in the orange zone. Uh, the New Brighton Brigade, a third of their brigade uh, have been, uh, are out of their homes, uh, can't live in them, they're unlivable mm. and they're still providing the service uh, to their communities as if nothing had happened and I find that um, absolutely amazing mm. and I find it uh, you know, quite humbling to, to see these guys. Mm. It's incredible what they do for the people in their communities. Oh absolutely, they uh, and, and they do it so cheerfully and they, and they do it without ex any expectation and that's mm. what I think is great. That's CTV News, I'm Emily Cooper. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand On Air.